Hello everyone, I am Amit Bhuptani, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Dr. Subhash Technical Campus, Junagadh. I welcome you all on today's presentation related with the subject Operation Research. In our today's presentation, we will study about the topic Transportation Problem. So this is the first lecture related to the topic Transportation Problem in which we will study about introducing the Transportation Problem. So before we begin our today's presentation, let us have an overview of today's presentation. The first topic that we will discuss that is definition of the transportation problem. Second topic that we will discuss that is assumptions in the transportation problem. Third, general transportation problem in tabular form. Fourth, LPP of transportation problem. Fifth, important terms related to the transportation problem. Sixth, example of LPP solution procedure for transportation problem and last methods to obtain the basic feasible solution so let us begin with our first point of discussion that is definition of the transportation problem so what is transportation problem transportation problem is a special case of linear programming problem and the main purpose or the main objective of the transportation problem will be to minimize the cost of transporting or the cost of distributing a product from a number of sources to a number of destinations. So transportation problem is a special case whose main objective will be to reduce the cost of transportation of its product from the sources to the destinations. For example, for understanding let us take an example okay, there are five source point there are five source point. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and there are 5 destination points where there is a demand of the product. So the products will be transported from the source point that is supply points and it will be transported to the demand points. So the cost of transportation from the supply points to the demand points or destination points the objective of this transportation problem will be to minimize the cost. Transportation problem thus arises in a situation where physical movements of goods takes place from plants to the warehouses, warehouses to the wholesalers, warehouses to the retailers. Warehouses is nothing but a place of storing a material that is called warehouse. So at that situations where there is a physical movement of goods from plants to the warehouses at that time transportation problem arises so main objective of our this transportation problem is nothing but to reduce the transportation cost or the cost of distributing a product from the source to the destination source is nothing but a place at which you are having the items that is stored and that is transported or that is sent to the places where the demand is there. That point is called destination point. Next, solution to the transportation problem arises or requires the determination of how many units should be transported from each supply origin to each demand destination in order to satisfy all the destination demands while minimizing the associated cost of transportation. So the main aim of the transportation problem will be how much units or how many units should be transported from each supply point to the destination points in order to satisfy the demand of the destination points such that the cost is minimized for doing such transportation from the source point to the destination point. So transportation problems task is to reduce the cost of transportation and how that distribution will be done, how many units will be uh, distributed or that will be transported from the supply point to the demand point such that demands are met at each and every destination points. So that is the task of transportation problem. Next, assumptions in the transportation problem. So the total quantity of items available 
at different sources is equal to the total requirement at different destinations. So, in this problem of transportation, there will be a source point and there will be a destination point. So, the total quantity that is available at each should be equal to the total requirement at different destination. Items can be transported conveniently from all sources to destination. Next, the unit transportation cost of the item from all source to the destination is certainly and precisely known. So, the transportation cost of each item from the source to the destination will be known uh, precisely. So, what is the unit transportation cost of single item that will be known then the transportation cost on a given route is directly proportional to the number of units shipped on that route yes as the number of units transferred that is more then the transportation cost will be more so it is directly proportional to the number of units that is trans that is transported as the number of units transported is more the transportation cost is directly proportional so that will be increasing if the number of units that you are transporting that is more so the transportation cost on given route is directly proportional to the number of units shift on that route next the objective is to minimize the total transportation cost for the organization as a whole and not for individual supply and distribution centers so what are the assumptions so, first assumption that is total quantity of items available at sources is equal to the total requirement at different destinations. So, that should be equal. Then, items can be transported conveniently from all sources to the destinations. Then, unit cost, unit transportation cost of all the sources to destination that will be known. Unit cost of transporting single item or shipping single item from the source to the destination that cost will be known uh, initially or clearly it will be known to all then the transportation cost is directly proportional to the number of units shift on that route so as the number of units that is more then the transportation cost will be higher because it is directly proportional to the number of units that you are shipping on the route then the objective is to minimize the total transportation cost. So, these are all the assumptions that the transportation problem has assumed. Next, general transportation problem in tabular form. So, this is the general transportation problem in the tabular form. So, here this will give you a clear idea or clear um, understanding of what is the transportation problem. On the left hand side you can see over here there are uh, column that is belonging to source. Source means the place from which you are supplying to the demand points or destination points. So there are suppose for example there is S1 source so the capacity will be given at the uh, right hand column that is in the capacity column here it will be given what is the capacity of that source point how much capacity is there of that particular source to transport the items or the product to the demand points and here it is given the demand points or destination points d1 d2 so the demand of each destination points will be given at the bottom that is demand d1 d2 d3 at the end of the column it will be given the demand of each points so this should be equal uh, supply should be equal to the demand so this condition is called rim condition here in the table you can see c11 c12 so this term is defined as an unit cost or cost of transporting one unit of item that will be mentioned very precisely and certainly it will be mentioned so this is c11 c12 that shows you the unit cost of transporting single unit of item this x11 x12 that represents 
number of units to be transported so this is all about the general transportation table in which you will be given a source point as well as the destination points and the capacity of each source points will be given at the end of the row or it will be given at the last column that is column belonging to the capacity so the source s1's capacity will be given over here source s2's capacity will be given over here similarly the there are n demand points so the demand of each points will be given at the end of the each column so for example for this demand point 1 its demand will be given at the end of the column that is d1 d2 and for the problem to be balanced the condition is si is equal to dj so that is called rim conditions where supply is equal to the demand next so this is the description about the table in the table each source has one row and each destination has one column that we had seen in the table the capacity of each source is shown at the end of each row yes that is shown at the end of and each destination demand is written under its corresponding column so the unit cost to ship from each source to each destination is written in the upper right hand corner of a cell this is the unit cost of transporting and that is written at the upper right hand side of the cell so the unit cost to ship from each source to each destination is written in the upper right hand corner of the cell the main problem is to determine xij that would minimize the total transportation cost as discussed in the previous slide xij represents the number of units to be shipped so our main task would be to identify or to determine the xij that would minimize the total transportation cost where xij stands for number of units shipped per route from source to destination here you just need to ship the items or the units or the products from source to destination based on its demand and based on its supply capacity so si is the quantity of product available at the source this is a general form si one i is equal to one two and up to m dj is demand dj is the quantity of product required at the destination so that is a general form and cij is the cost of shipping one unit from source i to j destination i stands for source and j stands for destination or demand point so what will be the cost that will be mentioned in the table we need to find what should be the amount or what should be the quantity that is xij what should be the quantity that should be transported from the source to the destination in such a way that the total cost of transporting is minimized we will have a better understanding once we will solve the example so uh, you just uh, understand uh, the basic general form next linear programming problem of transportation problem as we had discussed case and special case of linear programming problem so uh, we will write this transportation problem this tabular form into linear programming form this transportation problem is written in the linear programming form so the first thing that we need to do that is the first step that is to minimize the objective function in the transportation problem is to minimize the total cost of transporting so the objective function is denoted by z and that is to minimize the total transportation cost so it is written in the general form this x11 into c11 plus x12 this is the general form and this is the objective function then subject to constraints so the constraints means nothing but restrictions certain limitations which is supposed to be satisfied so subject to constraints that is xi1 plus xi2 plus is equal to si si stands for supply points so whatever are the quantities 
that is transported that should be equal to the supply points suppose from source 1 that is transported that is 7 then it should be equal that that transported quantities should be equal to the constraint and suppose for the source 1 we are having 7 capacity of source 1 is 7 so the number of units that is transported that should not be more than that that should be equal to 7 only so total supply from ith origin to all the destination is equal to total quantity produced at the ith origin third that is des uh, demand constraint okay, whatever is the demand that should be equal to or whatever the quantity that is transported that should be equal to the demand so total quantity transported at the jth destination from various origins should be equal to the quantity required so the quantity required or the demand that is 50 so the amount that is transported that should be equal to the 50 and fourth that is xij is greater than or equal to 0 for all i and j so xij is number of units that is transported and that is non-negative value so it is always greater than or equal to zero so the general mathematical model that of LPP uh, so the general mathematical LPP model of transportation problem can be written as minimizing the objective function that is the uh, total cost that is written as z is equal to sigma i to 1 to m and sigma z to m c i j x i j subject to the constraint that is capacity constraint and requirement constraint that should be satisfied some important terms that are used in uh, transportation problem uh, first one feasible solution so a set of non-negative values yes xij is a non-negative value and that is greater than or equal to zero it will not have any negative value subjected to ij that is 1 to m and j is 1 to n that satisfy the second third and fourth condition the second condition was the supply constraint third was demand constraint and fourth was xij is greater than or equal to zero so it's called a feasible solution to the transportation problem so for feasible solution to exist it is necessary that capacity equals to total demand and that is supply at source is equal to demand at destination this is called rim condition so the solution to be feasible first criteria that must be satisfied that is xij greater than or equal to zero then su supply constraint and capacity constraints should be also satisfied and fourth is there should be non-negative value of xij and rim conditions also should be satisfied for feasible solution to exist so rim condition is nothing but supply is equal to total demand next term basic feasible solution so and solution to be basic feasible solution so once you had obtained the feasible solution and feasible solution with an allocation of m plus n minus one number of variables is called basic feasible solution so to obtain the basic feasible solution one must have an allocation of m plus n minus one number of variables there should be an allocation of m plus n minus one variables where m and n are variables that is m stands for number of source point and n stands for number of destination points so there should be an allocation of m plus n minus one number of variables and this is called basic feasible solution next optimal solution our main task will be to obtain the optimal solution so how we can obtain the optimal solution a feasible solution is said to be optimal if it minimizes the total transportation cost so the first step will be to obtain the feasible solution then its main objective will be to minimize the total cost of transportation from the source to destination 
so this is all about the important terms that is used by the transportation problem next topic of discussion example lpp of the transportation problem so this example will give you a better understanding of how the transportation problem is written in the linear programming form so we are having one uh, table in which the data is given in the left hand column the, uh, value there is a factory in which there are three factories then uh, we are having the value of uh, warehouses in which there are four warehouses and at the last column we have given the capacity so here total number of source or uh, supply points that is three that is factory and demand points where the requirement is there that is warehouse over here so there are four warehouses and there are three supply points so factory one's capacity is given at the end of the row and that is 11 second factory that is f2 its capacity is given at the end of the row that is 13 third uh, factory whose capacity is given at the row that is 19 and we are having four warehouses whose demand is given at the end of the each column so for the warehouses w1 the demand is 6 for warehouses 2 the demand is 10 for a warehouse is 3 the demand is 12 and for warehouse 4 the demand is 15 so now how that this problem can be written in the linear programming problem or in the linear programming form we will see in our next uh, we will see in the next uh, image so let is uh, let xij represents the amount of quantity that is transported from the source to the destination j the objective here will be as we have discussed the objective function will be to minimize the total transportation cost so writing it in the form of linear programming form minimize z is equal to x11 this 211625 this all represents the unit cost of transportation that is 211625 this all represents the unit that is cij unit cost of transportation from factory 1 to warehouses 1 this 16 represents unit cost of transportation from factory 1 to warehouse 2 so this represents you the unit transportation cost so writing in linear programming form 21 x 11 here we ha we haven't found out right now what is the amount of quantity of the product that is transported so 21 x 11 16 x 12 25 x 13 and 13 x 14 plus 17 x 21 18 x 22 14 x 23 23 x 24 plus 32 x 31 plus 27 x 32 plus 18 x 33 plus 41 x 34 subjected to constraints we will have to satisfy the constraints of supply as well as demand so supply capacity of each factory is given at the end of the row so for first factory we must satisfy the constraint that is equal to 11 so that is 21 16 25 and 13 these all are the unit cost of transportation so x11 plus x12 plus x13 plus x14 is equal to 11 second constraint that is x21 plus x22 plus x23 plus x4 sorry x24 is equal to 13 and third constraint that is x31 plus x32 plus x33 plus x 4, 4, 3, 4 is equal to 19. So, these all are the capacity constraints. Then, demand constraints or requirement constraints. So, x11 plus x21 plus x31 is equal to 6. Here, at the end of each warehouse, its demand is given at the end of the column. So, at the end of the column. For the 
W1 warehouse its capacity is 6 for W2 its capacity sorry its demand I am sorry its demand not capacity for warehouse 3 its demand is 12 and for warehouse 4 its demand is 15 so requirement constraints can be written as x11 plus x21 plus x31 is equal to 6 x12 plus x22 plus x32 is equal to 10 then for the third warehouse it can be written as x13 plus x23 plus x33 is equal to 12 and for warehouse 4 it can be written as x14 plus x24 plus x34 is equal to 15 and xij is greater than or equal to 0. So to obtain the feasible solution one must satisfy all these four uh, constraints that is supply constraint requirement constraint or demand constraint and this objective function and x i j is always greater than or equal to zero that is non negativity constraint so this is how you can write the transportation problem in linear programming form next solution procedure for transportation problem so the first step for solving the transportation problem will be to develop an initial basic feasible solution to the problem which satisfies all the constraints that we had discussed. Second, examine whether the initial feasible initial solution is feasible or not. So you will have to check or you will have to examine whether the initial solution that obtained that is feasible or not. So the condition to examine is or to check whether the solution is feasible or not is the solution is said to be feasible if the solution has allocation in m plus n minus 1 cells with independent solution so the solution can be feasible only if the allocation is in the form of m plus n minus 1 then third step test whether the solution obtained in step 2 is optimal or not so optimal solution for that we will have to study about different methods to obtain the optimal solution next methods to obtain the basic feasible solution so before finding the optimal solution the first step for any transportation problem will be this that is to obtain the basic feasible solution so which are the methods that are used to obtain the basic feasible solution we will discuss in this the first method that is used to obtain the basic feasible solution that is northwest corner method which is used to obtain the basic feasible solution so this method is the simplest of all the methods and which is used to generate an initial basic feasible solution so various steps are discussed over here so the first step to solve the example using northwest corner method uh, first step is select the upper left hand corner cell of the transportation table so you will be given a transportation table so the first step is the selecting the upper left hand corner cell of the transportation table and allocate as many units as possible equal to minimum between supply and demand requirement so this can be better understood when we will solve one example in the upcoming or in the next video i will solve the example related to this northwest corner method which will give you a clear idea how to solve or how to obtain the basic feasible solution so the first step will be the table will be given to you that will be of the transportation problem in that first step is to select the upper left hand corner cell in that table select the upper left hand corner cell and allocate as many units as possible equal to minimum between available supply and demand requirements so for example the supply of source s1 is 12 and demand at the first point d1 is 10 so from that whichever is minimum 12 and 10 so the minimum is 10 so allocate that value at that upper left hand corner cell of the transportation table this is the first point that we are discussing second 
adjust the supply and demand numbers in respective rows and column allocation so once you have allocated in the upper left hand corner of the cell of the transportation table from the supply and demand whichever was the minimum that value that you have allocated then accordingly adjust the supply and demand numbers in the respective rows and columns so this is the second point third if the supply for the first row is exhausted then move down to the first cell in the second row and first column and go to step 2 then if the demand for the first row and column is satisfied then move horizontally to the next cell in the second column and first row and go to step 2 i can understand that this is a bit difficult for you to understand in the steps that are given but once we will solve the example in the next video you will be in a completely clear uh, idea you will have the complete idea or you will have the clear idea how this method is used to obtain the basic feasible solution okay so i am stopping the lecture over here we will continue in our next presentation about northwest corner method with the one suitable example which will help you to understand a better way which will help you to understand in a better way so this is all about today's presentation thank you